Hello and welcome to the, His the Research Center at the History Center of Olmsted County. My name is Krista Lewis and I'm the archivist here. On a normal day I'd be back here with volunteers taking care of our collection and helping patrons with research, but as with most of you, our normal activities have been put on hold. And since you can't come to us, we thought we'd try to bring history to you. Now there's lots of reasons to be interested in history, and for me, one of the things that always sparks my interest is discovering the connections between people, places, and events. So with that in mind, we'd like to give you a little tour of our archives and some of the things in it with a game we're calling 11 Steps to Kevin Bacon, because why do it in six degrees when you can have almost twice the fun? So let's go into the archives. First thing I want to show you is arguably our largest collection and it's also our largest preservation project in the archives and that is the Cutshaw Collection. The Cutshaw Photography Studio uh, operated in Rochester from 1937 to 1974 which means they created a ton of photos. They in fact take up this entire wall and fill 200 boxes. Uh, and what's in these boxes are the negatives which leads to the preservation part of this project. Uh, several of the boxes have started to smell like vinegar, which is a sign of something called vinegar syndrome, and that is an indication that the negatives have started to deteriorate. Now this is a process we can't stop, but we could slow down with cold storage. Unfortunately, we don't have the capacity for that, so we've opted to begin digitizing this collection, and this is one of the first boxes that we've digitized. Uh, and here is an example of what can happen to a negative during this deterioration process. Now the thing I really want to show you in this box is this packet of photos of uh, a series of uh, photos of dogs dressed in costumes from the 1940s. Um, I've printed off some of the images so you can see. Uh, here they are getting out of bed, putting on a show, playing dominoes. Now that on its own is funny enough to share, but these aren't just your average dogs. So if we look at the note card that came with the project, the clients were named Mildred Siebert and Lila Olson. And if we go to our book section, we can learn more about them. In our books, we see that Mildred Siebert and Lila Olson wrote a book called Taffy and Tuffy in 1942. And if we open up, we can see there's several photos of the dogs doing various activities, just like those that I showed you a minute ago. Now, Mildred and Lila uh, were the owners of Taffy and Tuffy, and they were also nurses at Mayo Clinic, where uh, many other patients got to know the dogs, and it inspired the writing of this children's book. And if we turn towards the front of the book, there is a page that says Tribute to a Dog, and it was written by Helen Keller. Now, if we look at the following page, it says that the dogs were great friends of Helen Keller, who met them once. If we also search our catalog, here in the archives, we noticed that Lila had met Helen Keller previously in 1942. In our oversized collection, we have a photo of Helen Keller with the Company D 1st Battalion Nurse Corps, which included Captain Lila Olson. So here's Helen Keller with Lila. Now, Helen Keller was often in Rochester getting medical treatment at Mayo Clinic, which gave her occasion to meet Dr. Chuck Mayo and even visit him at his home in Mayowood. And as any average family would who hosts dignitaries and celebrities, the Mayos kept a guest book, which we keep in our Mayo family papers. And here is one of them where Helen Keller signed her name. Now, of course, the Mayos are a big part of Olmsted County's history. Uh, Chuck, Dr. Chuck Mayo is a son, or was the son, of Dr. Charlie Mayo, who was one half of the founding brothers of Mayo Clinic. And in 1952, a memorial was erected in their honor, and we'll go show you a couple photos from our collection of that. So here's a photo from September 24th, 1952, showing the Mayo Memorial Committee standing before the still-veiled statue of the Mayo Brothers. And in it, we have prominent banker and civic leader Lester Fiegel. 
Then a few days later at the formal dedication on September 27th, we see Chuck Mayo with his family admiring the statues, the statue of his father and his uncle. Now, why did I point out Lester Fiegel? Well, if we look at our microfilm newspaper, we see that Lester Fiegel's son, Leland Fiegel, piloted an important mission to Russia uh, during World War II, and his co-pilot was Thomas Watson Jr. The two became really good friends on this mission and stayed so until Fiegel died in 1948. And it was this serendipitous pairing that led to an IBM plant in Rochester. So in the 1950s, when the IBM was expanding, they, um, Watson settled on Rochester as a site for the new plant because of his friendship with Fiegel. And so now we've got the iconic blue building that was home to IBM until very recently. And it, of course, was designed by famed Finnish architect, Eero Saarinen, whose father was Elial Saarinen. And he was also an architect, and he taught at the Cranbrook Academy of Art in Michigan, where one of his students, who would go on to become a prominent architect and city planner in Philadelphia, was named Edmund Bacon. Of course, he had a son that he named Kevin, who you might have seen in a few movies over the years. And so there you have it. In 11 steps, we've connected Kevin Bacon with two dogs named Taffy and Tuffy in Rochester from the 1940s. For more videos like this, please uh, follow us on social media and YouTube. And if you would be interested in helping support us during the COVID-19 crisis, please visit our website to learn more about becoming a member or making a donation. Thanks for joining us.